हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू वी एल एस आई अकेडमी दिस इज फिजिकल डिजाइन कोर्स लेक्चर 16 ऑन फ्लोर प्लानिंग एंड पार्टीशनिंग इन फिजिकल डिजाइन वेर वी शेल बी लुकिंग एट सम वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स इन प्रोफेशनल एंड इन इंजीनियरिंग वर्ल्ड इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव सीन सम बेसिक टर्मोलॉजीज लाइक वॉट इज साइट रो मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ग्रेड हेरार्किकल वर्सेज फ्लैट लेवल डिजाइन वॉट आर मैक्रोज एटसेट्रा इन दिस वीडियो वी शेल बी लुकिंग फर्दर अबाउट फ्लोर प्लानिंग स्टेप अर्लियर वी हैव लर्न अ टर्म कॉल्ड आस्पेक्ट रेशियो we have to define the aspect ratio of the design in the beginning of floor plan itself we have seen that aspect ratio is nothing but the length versus width of design this is the ratio that we call it as aspect ratio but as the complexity increased and more functionality was included in the same area the design was no more simple rectangular or a square but it could be a rectilinear form also then that time aspect ratio calculation is also modified to the ratio between vertical to horizontal routing resources so now a new definition of aspect ratio can be vertical resources versus horizontal resources before we go further let us also learn about utilization so if we go by the book the definition of the utilization is the area occupied by the standard cell macros or blockages the calculation of core utilization will be something like this so let's say core utilization we want to calculate it will be total standard cell area in the core divided by total row area plus channel area so this row area and channel area we put that in the dominator denominator so it will be like row area row area means there are multiple rows you can see this is one row this is one row this is one row like this there are so many rows in the core so whatever the row area is their total that will define our total core area because it will give us total this this total core area entire core area and then channel area so core area means this row it will calculate this row it will calculate every row plus there will be some area inside this channel you can see this channel area here that also will be taken care so channel area like this this will be calculated so there are four channels let's say one is x so it becomes 4x channel area is 4x plus your rows so row beginning will be happening from here now for macros so this will become total placeable area along with this channels that becomes your total available area for you to place the standard cells and how many standard cells are placed that will be standard cell area so there are let's say here they, we have shown only smaller amount of cells so that will be our total standard cell area in short you can say total occupied area in the core by standard cells so occupied area of standard cells is your total standard cell area divided by total available placement area available placement area that is your total utilization for the core but this is the core which we know this is our core and there is something outside that is die so core to die we have to maintain some spacing here that we need to keep in the mind just to give you an example here is the snapshot of moderately utilized standard cell placement here you can see that there are standard cells which are placed here some have some space in between them left over but here is the sna snapshot of high standard cell utilization in the core area the cells are placed very closely and design is highly congested command to calculate the utilization here is report utilization so report underscore utilization in the synopsis tools now let us learn about interface ports or ios ios are needed to communicate with outside of the block and the data and clock will travel through these ios so in soc level these io ports are called as io pads which gets connected to outside world via bumps at any level whether this is soc or a block level these io ports will be carefully placed in the floor plan itself with certain spacing and in certain metal layers so ios are placed in multiple metal layers it could be let's say 
M4, it means fourth metal layer from the beginning. So if your first metal layer is M1, this will be your standard cell rail. So this will be standard cell rail. These are the rows. And in this rows, let's say this is your M1 row. So standard cell powers will be placed in M1 rows. And then over that, M2 will be running. There on top of it, there will be M3. And then comes the M4. So let's say if your M1 is horizontal, then M2 will be vertical. And again, M3 will be horizontal. And M4 will be vertical. So vertical, you can see that these place are these ports are placed in the vertical direction so it could be like this or the direction could be outside also so with certain spacing these are placed in m4 so let's say this uh, bright colored are in m4 then next vertical layer will be m6 and m5 will be horizontal so m6 if it is vertical then it could be brown the dark colored ones are vertical which are placed in m6 so there could be multiple layers in which your ports are placed one very important point to note here is we have input pins and output pins in the standard cell this is your input pin this is your output pin in the standard cell this is your standard cell and pins are these pins this pins which you are seeing so pins are logical entity this defines your connectivity inside your block and it is part of your netlist so your pins are part of netlist and your ports are physical entity so ports are physical entity and these are part of your layout it is part of your layout and it defines the interface of block since time is running out that is all for this video if you have any questions please do ask them through the comments or email we will reply back for sure please do give your feedback in the comment section we will learn more about io placements and other floor plan steps in the next video thank you